Now that she's been purged of the Creeper's influence, all that remains between Yuki and her next target is the Grim Tower. Even without the Creeper, the nightmares will continue until we've killed the woman with the vampire smile that we saw at the end of the prologue. To do that, we'll be needing the same weapon that killed the dishwasher, our nightmare knife, still wet with his borrowed blood. Things are indeed pretty grim here. It is an aptly named tower. To deal with the hordes of undead in this monument to sadism, I've upgraded the saw to max, and I bought another skull worth of magic. I've also learned a bit of a new trick that I'll be showing off in this fight. If you press any attack button while you're running on the wall or the ceiling, you'll dive off and do an attack. With the Cloud Sword and the Kama, it's a diagonal downward strike, which is pretty useful, it tends to hit the enemy. The other two weapons, you'll dive off a specific distance and then drop directly down usually missing the enemy because they've run all the way up to the wall to try and get you. Here's what the wall attack looks like with conviction. That brief encounter out of the way. And you upgrade to our machine gun arm. Now a shotgun, which, contrary to the machine gun, is actually useful. Let's test it out. It instantly jibs any enemies that are within point-blank range and weak enough. Most humanoid enemies will be instantly destroyed this way, which makes it more useful than a grab for dealing with these instantly executable zombies and robots. As such, I could now theoretically use the Cloud Sword all the time with virtually no drawbacks whatsoever. But I'm actually going to be switching weapons around even more than usual because eh, variety is fun. And ascending further through the halls of the tower climb straight through the ceiling to find a portrait that's considerably less macabre than the ones downstairs. And the gun bead. That'll make our shotgun, and machine gun for that matter, do even more damage, making it deadlier to a wider range of enemies, but it's deadly enough for me already. We saw this solo in the co-op campaign, so let's check out another dead samurai solo, this time on the highest difficulty.
as you can see those solo charts get pretty hard and in the first game you are required to do them on the highest difficulty and to a certain percentage in order to get the prize so that guitar ear controller can actually come in handy for the solo in vampire smile we get the bone bead it increases our defense against slashing attacks you know how i feel about defensive beads so i will not be equipping it Here's the obligatory time segment. This time we have two minutes on the clock. Start off with a couple of black cyborgs. And we've practiced that fight enough times at this point. And they're gonna start pouring undead on us. Dead are not much of a threat at this point. They haven't been upgraded any since the first level, so we'll just be hacking through them with a variety of weapons. Trying out the comma for the first time in a little while. And our relatively new painkiller that we haven't seen too much of yet. He's going for a specific execution, but he didn't have quite low enough health at the time. Once I get the flamethrower cyborg out of the way, this would be a perfect hallway to use the shotgun in. But I'm still not quite used to having it, so I'm going to forget about it. storyline reason for why this tower is infested with undead is that they are the risen victims of General Diabolis' sadism. Even still, not much of a threat to us. Pretty sure we're maxed out on squid chips at this point. This room is kind of interesting because it's huge and elaborate and kind of pretty, but there's absolutely nothing in it. It's kind of a weird theme with this level. Oversized, overly elaborate rooms with nothing in them. But this is not one such room going to have quite a few cyborgs in it. Even though the Conviction Blade is objectively worse than the Kamikaze, I have kind of a liking for it. There's a specific move that it has that is incredibly useful. I'll be showing it off a little bit later. And for the most part, it's just generally better at moving opponents around, whereas the Kamikaze will hold them in place. Which is better for single targets, but Conviction can be a little better for groups of enemies. Love that blade magic. key for that locked door we passed on our way here. And just to show it off, this room is also obscenely oversized. Still nothing in here, except for some pale moonlight shining into the background. So we used our new key. to get a new key. But it's actually a trap. And the 
these tight quarters filled with highly damaging opponents can be pretty difficult. It's easy to die here. Fortunately, I've got dealing with the Samurai's down pat. The ninjas are actually perfect targets for the shotgun. But again, not used to having it. There was the move that uh, makes Conviction better than Kamikaze, in my opinion. It's an instantly executed chainsaw uppercut. That was a mean little surprise. Samurai dropping in right on top of you from a spawn point. Always seems to get me. Fortunately, I don't give him a chance to attack after that, or else he would have killed me. This way is walled off, so we're gonna have to go the long way around. Up this way is a secret. The hacksaw bead is a very nice bead. It upgrades all melee damage with no drawback. So if you're going to put on a damage upgrading bead, make it the Hacksaw bead. And we're locked in here as well. I've actually gotten pretty lucky with which enemies spawned in originally. Cackling means that there's chainsaw guys. You don't want those guys to spawn in at the beginning. You definitely don't want the two of them to spawn in together. Because with the third enemy in there mucking things up, that can be a recipe for disaster. Luckily, I killed the one before the second one showed up. Making this room uncommonly easy. I render that one pretty harmless, but kill you very quickly. With that celebratory throat bite, we can now move on after we grab the cash. Here's the other side of that walled off area. And the boss, the Murderfly. Certainly a visually appealing boss. I like the idea of a boss that mostly sticks to the air. Unfortunately, the actual fight is not especially interesting. If you try to take to the air and face him on his own terms, you're going to die. He's always moving towards you with his blade, so it's not good news. All you can really do is wait for him to slam down and then charge up your Cloud Sword attack, which I've discovered the official name of is the Righteous Shockwave of Justice. Makes me want to use it all the more. And with that strategy, he's killed pretty quickly and harmlessly. And the other strategy is likely to kill you. Another big open empty room. This one is foreboding.
general thinks he can defend himself. He can't. now proven that that violent monster isn't who we really are by putting a knife through her head, twisting it to break her neck, and putting a clawed foot through her face. Mm -hmm. 